What is good guys? We have a huge announcement. The Cocktails and Takeaways live show is in full action on the 4th of July, 2023. It's gonna be in the O2 Indigo. We are gonna have live performances, special guests. I'm telling you guys, this is a whole new experience. No more sitting down and talking on a boring ass sofa with all the live shows and all their boring ass games. We are taking podcast live show to the next level. So make sure you get your tickets by clicking the description box below. And I'm going to tag it in the comments as well. And I will see you on the 4th of July. Per. Welcome to Cocktails and Takeaways. My name is Madam Joyce. And guys, I know you're not used to me saying hello in the intro, but I just said, let me switch it up a bit. You know, it's a new month, it's a new energy, so we're having a new structure, but I hope you guys are well. I wanted to say, I hope you guys had a fantastic week. Obviously, this week has always been chaotic for me, but I'm glad to be back in the studio. Minus the fact of all the train strikes and all the chaotic thing that occurs you know, in at the Bamba Club London place, planning for the live show as well. Thank you to everyone who's bought a ticket so far. I will see you guys on the 4th of July. And if you guys haven't bought a ticket, please do, because you don't want to miss out on the fun. But I hope you guys are well. Big up everyone that is listening in their homes, listening in their space, in their area. I'm really excited to kick off this show. And of course, we have a very special person joining in on the conversation. Now, you guys are not used to me doing the intros at the beginning but i feel like some people need to be introed from the jump because they're the real ogs in a the bamba club place Mm -mm. let me tell you (laughs) something guys i'm so honored like for like this month i've actually had the pleasure to sit with so many people that i've grown up watching and I, i have been admired by their journey just to see them go from one to two to three to four and you are definitely another person in that category and i'm honestly i'm so so happy you're here but guys i would love to introduce you to my guest she is a content creator and a quality lifestyle expert who has been in the game for 10 years since in the (laughs) beningi With her wise words and wisdom (laughs) and transparency, she has helped so many of us get through life's hiccups and she is still going strong to this day. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so glad to have Chanel Boitag in the motherfucking building! Opening (laughs) Pompany. Open it, pumping What's this? I don't What's know. That's, 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 when, when, when I, ah, when I come speak on. to any Let's go. Ghanaian people, like, I just think of open it, pumping it. What else? You know? You know? <laughs> like, that's the only that's thing. How, what else? What else? <laughs> <laughs> how, <laughs> how are you, Queen? How are you doing? How's your week, baby? I'm good. This this drink here. Barefoot. It's lovely. Let me Barefoot. tell you something. Have you had it before? I have, yes. It's normally in my fridge, darling. Do you know what? As it should be. When I was in, <laughs> when I was in uni... This was the drink that we used to drink. Guys, if you don't know about Barefoot Pink Moscato, excuse me. They didn't no, pay, they they pay, pay us. Promo. They didn't they pay, pay, they pay us. They didn't pay us. down, they put pay us. <laughs> <laughs> like, but that was the drink and it, it tastes so nice. Yeah. But it gets you leaky leaky. It actually does get, I'm a little bit, because I, 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 I the first very quickly. The drink will get you leaky yeah. leaky. I think wine drunk is like probably the most dangerous drunk because it's a very like, you know, shoulder raising Mm-hmm. Leaky, leaky. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's fab. Guys, I want to get straight into hot topics. Again, we don't usually do hot topics here, but guys, we're having a restructure. Yeah. And I think there's some conversations that need to be had off the bat. So, this week has been a chaotic week. And of course, we are going to be starting with the trending topic of this week, which is Black China. Very Black China. Black China <laughs> was tiger. Blackity poom-poom. Black China. Black and black. Now she's now she's Angela White. I sh- we can tell call her. She's not Angela White. She, no, 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 no more black on her again. No now black Angela. No, 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 no. She's not. She's not white. So for she's guys, Angela White. No, she's Ange- <laughs> she went from black to white, like Michael Jackson. <laughs> what is this? No, like Michael Jackson. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you like this? 
choice. I'm sorry. <laughs> I made a mistake. Don't plug me. I made a mistake. <laughs> right. So for you guys that don't know, Black China is celebrating her new appearance as she becomes known to the world by her birth name, Angela White. This is me now, she says on the Tamron Hall, as photos of her face with filler and without were flashed on screen. So Black China has removed all her surgical enhancements. Mm -hmm. She's been baptized. She's had a tattoo removal. So she's basically had a whole rebrand and she's mm -hmm. now, you know, finding her identity and finding herself. And it's, she's a she's a reborn Christian. She's she's a born again Christian she's now. So again. she got baptized, isn't she? Yeah, she got baptized and she's yeah. been on this like. And she um, went a bit quiet for a minute. She did after the whole situation that happened with Kim Kardashian and mm. the court situation. Mm -hmm. Sister girl isolated. She said, "Don't speak to me anymore." <laughs> and she came out and I she get just it. I like that. That's what you have to do, you know. Sometimes you know when you want to rebrand your life mm -hmm. and yourself, you just go quiet and you work on that. You get me? So I'm. I'm here for transformation. That's what I do. Like that's mm -hmm. what I did. I'm from the hood. I'm very proud to be from the hood. How are we uh, talking? How hood? We're talking Stonebridge. We're talking house. We're, we're talking talk Church Road. We're talking. <laughs> we're talking hood. Isn't that where C Biz is not from? Church what? Road. Church Road. Who? C Biz. C who? Sibiz, who's that? See ya, see ya, see. Maybe no? I can't remember. Girl, I don't know. One rapper that's always like Church Road. I Church know Road. Nines is from Church Road. Skinny nigga, bum a fat belly. I don't know his beans, music, you know. That's so but I actually know I'm not that's gonna say his actual like Christian name, I actually know his name name. Like <laughs> that's, that's how I and that's the nines that's I know the, from ends, but I love Yeah, it. I I admire a transformation story. Mm -hmm. I admire something where, you know, you know, uh, you know, a rags to riches type of story. I agree. It's inspiring, you know. So it's interesting watching Black China come from Black China to Angela White, as you said. Do you know what? I'm <laughs> loving it. And I and I watched the interview with And she's Jason doing up Lee. Forbes. What? You can't she's talk to her. She's fabulous. And it's interesting because I, we, we didn't see her that long ago. The last time we saw her was when she was at, I don't know if it was Vanity Fair or the Oscars or it was at a, it was at a red carpet thing. And she mm -hmm. came and she, had, she, she looked terrible, respectfully. Oh no! So, but she can't, can't respectfully that. say someone looks looks terrible. But she looked terrible. yeah, she didn't look good. She, basically. Didn't, she didn't look her best, mm. and she had the fillers and everything, and she mm -hmm. was wearing this big like puffy feathered outfit, yeah, uh, bodysuit. I'll get it up, and it, she just looked very chaotic. And seeing her now, um, obviously she's dissolved all the fillers. Mm -hmm. She's in, in respecting her natural beauty, and the girl is really gorgeous. She is, oh, she's she is very, very pretty, very girl. beautiful. But I want to talk about this tattoo. So there was a tattoo that was removed and it was of a Baphomet. Is it Baphomet? Baphomet. Baphomet. So if you guys don't is, yeah. know what Baphomet is, it's literally like a symbol of like the devil or the de or a demon. Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, oh my God, Angela, you know, she removed it. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I'm like, girl, why'd you get that in the first place? That's a deep thing, you know, because Very you know deep. how we are on, in our culture and mm -hmm. not even culturally, like biblically, mm -hmm. like there's there's certain scriptures or there's a scripture about, you know, having t tattoos full stop, yeah. let alone of an actual demon, you know. So you're, ag you're against tattoos? I'm not against it. Well, I'm not against it. No, but I mean, do you? Right. Biblically, I, I mean, I've got a couple of tattoos, but I won't do it now. Okay. I'm a born again Christian now. I'm okay. not going to do tattoos now. And I've grown out of it. It's not even the Christian aspect, to be it's honest. Just it's that like, face. What am I going? Yeah, that face yeah. you do. I, I got my first tattoo when I was, what, 16 or whatever. You know, done before I'm gonna I was 50 p. <laughs> I'm going to get 50p. It's your name. Yeah. I knew it. Oh my God. <laughs> Why would you know that? And because for some reason, like, if you'd got your first tattoo and you're 16, usually it's your name. Yeah, it's it like, was. Yeah, very but... childish. And I actually, do you know what's funny? I swear... I actually tried to remove it as well when I realised why did I do this? Because I went to my friend I went with my friend to do it, she got her name, I got my name. I didn't know why I did it. So one day I was like, why do I have to do this? Let me try and get it removed. So when I was watching Black China's removal, mm -hmm. I, it just got brought all back the memories of the pain. The pain to remove it is even worse really? than when it gets. It's horrible. Because I see the pictures, I see like sometimes on like, yeah. Of someone this scraping your hand with 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 really? all types of knives and blades in the world it's the most horrible feeling oh ever so i only done one session i was like i'm not going back again i need to do more because you need to, to have more than one commune. session yeah yeah so she's not done no she's definitely she's not, not done. done that baphomet is still there <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> The, de still, the devil is still around. No, but I'm, I'm so shocked. Like, and 
that somebody thought to tattoo that because there's no other it's meaning. Extreme. You know, there's some people that are like, oh yeah, the triangle means the, the, the world, but then also the triangle means the Illuminati. Like there's some people that have different meanings to things. Mm-hmm. Like, well, this one a has meaning is a meaning. One meaning. It is just that and what it is is exactly what it is. And it's the actual Baphomet. Like literally, Actually, literally. the ones that are in the sat- satanic churches. Yeah, like, in the satanic it's, churches. Oh, yeah. It's a serious one. I'm very one. interested to know what that was about and you know mm. what yeah I, I can understand from a certain degree black child has had a really hard oh it's been hard tough for upbringing her. yeah you, we can just her see mom. from her mom her mom is crazy tokyo tony she's the one she's needs she's the one that needs the real deliverance the will i need to send her the warfare um the thing, warfare prayers the warfare prayers that i listen to in the night because <laughs> that's what she needs but i'm can i just say i'm i love anybody Mm-hmm. that wants to grow and advance themselves. And I feel like a lot of times with celebrities, we don't give them the chance and opportunity mm-hmm. to, to grow because it's like, well, we remember you as this, so we're going to keep you as this. But like any other human being, like people that you've worked with, life is about growing and evolving. And I, That's it. I'm, I was one person in 2015, but now I've learned, I've grown, mm-hmm. I've developed, and I feel like we should give people grace and opportunity to do that. I like the fact that she's sharing it as well. And she's sharing it, yeah. And you know, she doesn't necessarily have to, but it's really important because you'd be so surprised. A lot of people are going through this. And also, hopefully these other celebrities and whatever are also taking note because, mm-hmm. I mean, the lifestyle that she's probably exposed to must be mad. Yeah, The drugs, Absolutely. the this, the that. It's Hollywood, isn't mm-hmm. it? I think she even said, you know, the reason why she got all the fillers and that is because everyone else was, was doing getting it. it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So now her ch- kind of going back, taking that away from herself as mm-hmm. well. She, hopefully it might just inspire people because you know what? It's, 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 it's not... Listen, do what you want to do with your body. Absolutely. But I think do it for for for... For real reasons, real reasons, not because somebody else is doing pressuring it. pressuring you to do it or you're seeing Do you know what people, I mean? Yeah. Like, okay, maybe you're insecure about a certain thing, so you want to change it because it bothers you. It mm-hmm. makes you cry, it makes you upset, it makes you depressed. So you're going to make that change, mm-hmm. but to just do it because somebody else is doing it. Now, that's not that's not cute at that's all. Not, and that's not a reason that stands. It's not Because good people reason. are so fickle. One mm. minute they're doing this filler, the next minute they're doing that filler. It's like, is every time people change, are you also going to be changing with them? Mm-mm. It's better to just do your own thing. And speaking of change and advancement, you, my good sister, oh, are in a very similar season. Mm-hmm. Can I just say I'm so pleased for you? Thank you I let me let me Thank say the last. You. So obviously we follow each other on Instagram, mm-hmm. and I absolutely love your content. And I remember seeing you one minute, and you were your big voluptuous, beautiful self. You, I believe, I saw you doing a real. You were doing a fashion real, mm-hmm. and the next minute you were on holiday. A holiday. That's a darling. And yes. I said, excuse me. <laughs> I said, I said, hold on now. You have lost so much weight, yeah. and the thing is, I love the big girls. I, I would, I like to to grow as myself as as a thick girl. Mm-hmm. You know, I love my big girls, but I think with the journey that you have gone through with everything that's happened with your relationship and now, where is your mental? I, I want, I want you, I want to celebrate with you right now. Talk to me. We thank God. Yeah, I had weight loss surgery. Mm-hmm. I've shared it on my channels. Yeah. I've spoken about it. I shared it about a year after I did it because I really wanted, this was like uh, more than just weight loss. This was a spiritual journey for yeah. me. This was just a growth journey for me. I needed to come out of what I felt was keeping me held back from being the true Chanel I'm meant to be, you know? So um, yeah, I've lost 12 stones now, almost that. 12 stones? Almost 12 stones. That's a small child. That's <laughs> a whole, it's a whole, it's a whole human. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I've also lost almost and 12 what, stone. And what, was, and what was the reasoning for your decision? Because I know that there's so many girls mm-hmm. who are probably thinking, oh, weight loss surgery. Because now, before, weight loss surgery was something that was put for people who were really, like, really, really, really obese, obese, obese and had yeah. probably health-related health issues. Related to the, Thank to the, the, God yeah. I didn't have health-related yeah. issues. But at the same it's time... Got more, it's got more private now. So, like, even yeah. if, you're, if, you're, if you're quite overweight... But, you know, you might not be able to get to on the NHS, but mm-hmm. you might be able to go privately. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. I done my privately. Mm-hmm. Um, I I was trying to get in on the NHS at first because, you know, you try them routes there. Yeah, you kind <laughs> of do what you got to do. Just... But pandemic yeah. said no. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I need to get this done. And I done this for so many reasons. But um, I just, I've all, I've, I've haven't always been confident my, about my weight, but along my journey of being a content creator, and doing fashion and styling, I learned to love and work with what I had. Mm-hmm. And it inspired 
millions of people. Let's keep it real. Um, but the reality is, how am I feeling in terms of walking and having back aches and being out of breath and, you know, not being able to fit into certain places? Nah, like, re- and my children. Yes. I have kids to raise. Yeah. There was one time I took my son to Legoland. He wanted to go on a ride, babe. My poor baby was crying. Mommy, mommy, I want to go on a ride. I want to go on a ride. Do you know what I said? I, I was like, baby, we can't go. Do you know why? Because I felt that I wouldn't fit on the ride and I'll get embarrassed and I'll get turfed. So I was like, I'm not doing this so to myself and my kids anymore. They're boys. They need me to be fit and just be able to run around with them. And I'm able to do all of that now. Do you know what I mean? Um, I'm not saying that you can't if you are at that size. You can do anything you want, I guess. But I knew for me, I know this, uh, people used to even question like, is this not going to affect your brand and your bag? And I'm not even going to lie. It has a bunch of brands like don't even work with me anymore because now I'm smaller but they worked with me because I was a plus size content creator but I was like you know what I don't give a shit Mm -hmm. I need to be in a space where I'm comfortable with being me so if it means my bag that's it we'll figure out another way to make a bag you know we're we 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 hustle out here so it is what it is um so I'm so glad that I did what I did for myself for my kids and I'm good I'm happy and I don't even do as much fashion content now. Look at that. I just don't, I don't, it's not like I'm not ever gonna do it, but it's not like a big thing. I remember like, there was so much pressure as a plus size content creator to always, you know, show the trends for plus size women. And the reality is I don't actually buy clothes in excess like that. So I'll be honest with you, it's even saving me a little bit of money now. <laughs> I don't buy clothes like that, like for real. I, sh- I do like seasonally now. That's when I'm mm-hmm. sharing, you know, what I bought from here or what I bought from there, you know, and that's it. I'm so proud of you, and I feel Thank like you. the fact that you're, you're the fact that it's it's so crazy because a lot of people lose weight because of societal pressures, mm-hmm. but you are telling me that losing weight costs you money, costs ah! you brand deals. Mate. So it's like the complete opposite turnaround of what usual people would go. The through. lifestyle of being a plus size person is expensive. I swear down. Yeah, and it, this, I, we need to keep it real, hundred percent, because you can't go into any store and buy mm-hmm. clothes, and that's unfortunate. Because I think a part of my job as a plus size content creator was to advocate so stores can start seeing or bringing in plus size. And I'll be honest, what I do online really, I'm I know the brands are taking note, and so brands started introducing curve and plus size lines. So yes, mm-hmm. I would say my advocacy, so to speak has, you know, put us in that area. But at the same time, the same time, the reality is, I'm not even talking about the clothes, like food costs bare money. (laughs) It's expensive to eat, et cetera. Also like traveling is a headache sometimes as well. Unfortunately, you have to ask for like a belt extender and all of that. Now I'm not saying that to put anybody off who's plus size, but that was my reality. Yeah. That was my reality. It's and definitely, diff- it's a lot more difficult. It's, it's more and difficult I, and for I, us. And I, yeah. I, I was tired of, being, tired of being stressed all the time, to mm-hmm. be honest as well. Like, I'm like, first of all, my health and yeah. and all of that. And then obviously my children. And then lastly, just making life easier. How about that? Mm-hmm. I, and I did it for me to feel happy, content, confident, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. And you're, st- you're, 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 you're still a fantastic size. Like you're still thick. You've still, still got it. I still you've still got, got, it. got everything. You've still got it. the thickness. And I feel like mm-hmm. it's, it's not necessarily the aim to be supermodel skinny. Like as a joke, I say, I say, no. I say, I, I use this word a lot and I use this word skinny legend. I like to say skinny legend. I but I say, I say, I do say it as a joke. It's not that I want to be skinny, but I feel like if I lose two pounds, I'm a skinny legend. Like it's, very, <laughs> it's a very dramatic thing that I use. Yeah. But I think the goal is, like you said, to be healthier, to be able to have those experiences with your sons, mm-hmm. to be able to have those experiences where it's, where the standard is to just have a normal life, not having to do to do or be to have sorry, not having to have to go through all those extras exactly, because sadly yeah. society hasn't accommodated for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um but to just do it freely and have a good time and, and be healthy and walk up the stairs and be able to breathe. Oh my god, I And I do so much more now. Yeah than I was ever be able yeah. to before because I was too heavy to do it. And yeah. that's the truth. Fabulous. As you said, even things like going up the stairs and like literally like bending down, it's just so easy. Mm-hmm. And that's the reality. I, I know like 
people are all for body confidence and that I still am regardless. 100%. I'm still, I still got roles. I still got the stretch marks. Yes. I still got those that I have to, um, even one of my biggest insecurities, I'm actually sharing a video tomorrow of that is my breasts. Absolutely. Oh, I've spoken about this, the hanging breast. Oh yeah, we got, we got all the hanging breast girl here. Big up. Oh there. my God, I actually Listen. hate my boobs though. Like I literally have, that's now that's my, the thing I'm facing and what am I going to do about that? I don't know, but we get, I get the whole confidence thing and, 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 and bigging up yourself and loving yourself. Mm -hmm. But being plus size, the reality of it is it how how is how is it affecting my well being day to day? Your well being, yeah, your day to day. I can't be feeling any type of way. I mm -hmm. have to feel good because there's so much I need to do and I ain't got time. I agree. <laughs> I ain't I got time. Agree. Yeah. And again, like I absolutely love my plus size girlies. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's some people that can function fine and be plus size. Like I've seen people who dance, who are dancers. Yes. And they're plus oh. size. They have more stamina than me. Oh. And it's, it's like, girl, like how you how yeah. you thinking you can walk and you could be doing all of this and not break a yeah. sweat. You know, those people they have the grace to to do that. Mm -hmm. But for me, that when I woke up the stairs, like I remember I was <sighs> I was with um. James from Shits and Gigs, big up James. We went for lunch one day and his car was in a car park mm. and we had to climb the stairs. And obviously James is a very handsome man. He's my friend, but goddamn, that boy is fine. We have to say he's a fine boy. <sighs> and we're walking up the stairs. <laughs> I'm walking up the stairs and he's walking in front of me. And we're walking, we're walking, we're walking. And when I got to the top here, I said, Ooh. but obviously because he's fine, I had to hold it in. <laughs> I had to hold <laughs> I said, breathe. Uh, you know what you, you, know you want to do? <laughs> I said, no. I said, so I'm trying to. And then he went to the he went to the ticket machine to obviously get the tickets for his car. As soon as he left. <sighs> oh my God. <laughs> I needed to let it out, girl. I needed to let it out. I needed to breathe <laughs> the way I wanted to breathe. But it's hard. Yeah, it's yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. I hear that, babe. But I'm so pleased for you. And I'm so pleased for everyone that's going on that same journey. And sometimes, and also, sometimes the, like, the, let's let's leave the physical change, but also the mental change that oh, you've had. Baby. And the spiritual change, because mm -hmm. obviously you've, you've shown us a very um, public divorce that you're going mm -hmm. through, a whole lifestyle change. Do you want to just elaborate more on that? Oh, I tell you what, I feel like the weight loss, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say is the reason for it all because things have been happening behind the scenes that nobody knows about from before. Mm -hmm. But for me, as in for me, the individual, it definitely contributed to the wake up call for me mm -hmm. that you have got this opportunity to live your best, bestest life yep. and therefore check everything around you. And that's exactly what I did. So yes, I um, have divorced officially. It is settled, finalized, Congratulations. final order. We um, signed. It's, it's signed for, yeah. it's granted, <laughs> it is what it is. I am now Ms. as opposed to Mrs. Yes. Um, and um, my lifestyle, I, I made sure at least for the next, the, for the past year, I did everything or the most things that I wanted to do to just make myself feel good. I started doing solo trips, Fab. solo spa dates, going away. Um, I literally went to Brussels last year. I spent a bag of money. I, I just didn't give a shit, babes. Yeah. I spent a bag of money, I went to Brussels and spent a time in this nice hotel, went to the spa, um, traveled first class with my son to, to Florida, had a Fab. wicked holiday in Disney. You know, I did all the things that I deserved. I started even like, not even like started, but I was like, you know what? I'm a splurge. I'm a splurge yeah. and spoil myself because I bloody well deserve it. You do. And I tell you what, even as things as little as the, the the weight loss surgery gave me the confidence to do that, you know, and just live myself, live, live my life for me. Mm -hmm. But it's been a year and reality is, you know what? for the rest of the year and it's cost of living crisis. Oh. Let's just chill. <laughs> cool okay, down, I've got cool holiday down. next week though and I need this holiday. Fabulous. Um, And it, again, these are things Where that- Where are you off to? I'm going to Ghana. Ghana, Ghana, the land of gold. Open the pump What else? <laughs> what else? I'm, I need to go to Ghana. Oh, I, I need haven't to been. Just... I haven't been in 16 years. Wow. What made you decide to enter the scene? Well, to be honest with you, um. The last time I went, I stayed for a month. I bloody loved it. Stayed at my aunt's. 
And then I wasn't finished with uni yet. It was like first or second year of uni I went. I was like, when I'm done uni, I'm going to go back. I'm really going to see Ghana. I wanted to see if I can establish myself there, to be honest. And that would have been a wow. perfect opportunity too. Because everything was so fresh. There was no move and pick hotel and... Mm-hmm. Um, What's it called? What's it? Your coat, you, yo, zoo, yo, these, all these nice, well, I don't know. Yeah. flashy places in Ghana. There was none of that yet. That, that, that was the opportunity. Yeah. Uh-huh. That was an opportunity to really perhaps yeah, invest into, invest space, into yeah. it. But I had my baby boy. And he's such a blessing and I love him to bits. He's 13 years old. He's going to be 14 this year. Wow. Yeah. But after I had my baby boy, I just, I didn't have the opportunity to go back since. It's just been building myself, building my brand, building my business, building our lives, so to speak. Um, and you know, I wouldn't say mama, mama hasn't made it, so to speak yet, but we're okay. Oh, so it. now, now it's time to go back and see what's up. And I'm so blessed to know so, so much great people in Accra that are doing big things as well. So they're all like, Chanel, come, 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 So I'm like, okay, I'm ready. Do you know I'm what, ready. can I just say, I'm so proud of you, you know, I'm really Thank so you. proud. I feel like, a, like we, I don't know, for some reason this month, we've just had this theme of almost starting again. Or yes. starting again in a sense of, you know, you had one life, you were with one partner and now you're just here and you're just reinventing and recreating yourself. And it's it's never too late. To be honest, I don't even want to say that. That's what you say to 60 years old. You are you are still young, you are still bouncy, you are still, you are still sexy. Please don't say that, <sighs> oh yeah, 60. The thing no, is, you know what the madness now. is? You know, the sexiness and the love in myself and all of that. It kind of did, it was drawn back or diminished or, or something in my marriage. It wasn't quite popping how it should be. How I know how I'm meant to be because I was a hot girl. Trust me, like <laughs> I was a hot girl. Like, like back in the day, as a teen or like early twenties, I was doing bits, you know. And I had a child, and you know, motherhood changes you and mm-hmm. whatnot. And I just started to focus on other things. And let's just say that you know, I'm getting my sexy back. In yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. As you should. Can I just say something? Regardless of where you are in life, let's let's prioritize this week to be sexy. Mm. I feel like sexiness can be at any age, at any yeah. time in your life. At yeah. any, and it's not even, I don't think it's even a time of age. I feel like sometimes when you get into motherhood, mm-hmm. the sexiness is like, oh yeah, I'm a mother now. Like, let me be a bit more conservative. No, the, the mummies can be milfy. Can the milfy mummy start standing up? Like, I just feel like sometimes we get to certain times in our lives, mm-hmm. yeah, and especially sometimes we're in relationships, we've been in a relationship for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years. And it's like, we forget that. You know what? At one point in my life, I was the it girl. Oh, I and I was, and you was like, I'm not know, being funny. it's still there. Do you know what it means? It's like, it hasn't gone anywhere, girl. You just need to put that miniskirt on and get to work. Mi- miniskirt. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Like, I look at my peers, for example, mm-hmm. and I see their, t- like, late teens, early 20s pics. And they were probably, they weren't up to the times like that. I'll be honest. Let them know. They weren't up to the times like they that. They weren't your mates. But back in the day, come and see, Okay. I have my hair doing this and I'm wearing got the this Ghanaian girl body something, something. to waist ratio oh, but crazy. I tried. Bring it back. <laughs> and Bring it after back. After I had Emmanuel, my, my first son, I just, okay, I'm a mum now. I just scaled all of that back. Um, and I did have a bit of a, a another blooming moment. And then I met my ex. And I wouldn't say he took that away from me, but part of obviously marriage, in most cases or in some cases is, okay, that's not important to be that sexy extra. And for me, let me just define sexy because Mm -hmm. I'm not like overly like short skirt and stuff. That's not my style. I'm really here for the refined look, like a blouse and, you know, some wide, you know, like oh, fabulous, pants. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like one of those rich- like the Russian girls. You know, those, the, yeah, you yeah. know like those rich, you know, women that have no logos on yes. their outfits to show that they're wearing Chanel and stuff. Yes. But yes, very here we classy. are, Lady of the Mallon vibes. It was yes. very much that, that's that's my style. So it's not like sexiness with all my legs out and all oh, of that. No, yeah. I can do that as well. But, but for the most not, part, that's not the that's definition not, that's, of your that's sexy. not the definition of my sexy. Mm-hmm. My sexy is literally that and feeling confident. And even if you're gonna be in your joggers and your sweaters, it's really what is within your mm-hmm. within yourself and how you feel about yourself and 
what defines your sexy. Do you get what I'm saying? So I that's what that. I mean. I just really needed to clarify that. No, no, that's yeah. part of the story. Sometimes when I'm like... No, it's me, fine. Me, because it's I could do the sexy as well. Baby, we have the cleavage. No, but you're absolutely right. And, and all of that. Sometimes we have to. But sexy is in definition to mm-hmm. how you feel about yourself when you look in the mirror. If you can look in the mirror, regardless of what you're wearing, if that's in a track pant, if that's in a in a mini skirt, if that's in a long skirt, if that's in a wide fit, mm-hmm. and you can look in yourself and be like, God damn it, I look good. Mm. That's your sexy and you own it. But I feel like it's that feeling you get when you when you look at yourself and you're like, I'm a bad bitch. Yeah. This is it. I am a bad bitch. That's the yeah. and that's how I feel right now. But what the Fabulous. I love, I love. And that's how every woman should try and aim to feel. If that's where she wants to go with herself anyway. In any capacity. Even if whether you're a housewife or stay at home mum. I hope you can get to the space where you look at yourself and say, but at the end of the day, I'm doing this and I'm killing it at what I'm doing. That is the goal. I yeah? love that. Feel good about what you're doing. Feel good about what, you, mm. what you're doing and feel good about how you're looking doing it. Uh-huh. Period. Period. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. subscribe. Right, guys, so let's move on to a hot topic. That was the meat of it, but we're just going to go through some hot new releases. So, Davido has come up with his new album this week. Mm -hmm. Can I just say, I'm really proud of him. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm really proud of him. Everything that's happened, it's called Timeless. Please, guys, Mm -hmm. make sure you check it out. Um, I saw that in an interview that he did, I can't remember who it is, so forgive me, he was speaking about you know, how this album was supposed to be out prior to his son's death. Mm -hmm. So the album was already set. It was three years in the making. Mm -mm. Obviously, his son passed away and he needed time to just heal and Uh breathe. And I think it's interesting because in this situation, a lot of people were surprised to see Davido come out um, after his son's death. Mm -hmm. But I feel like there are two types of people. There are people who, you know, when they're going through grief, they hide and they go into isolation and there's some people who bury themselves in their work because it makes them happy. Mm-hmm. I feel like Davido is the latter. And he was saying that, listen, I want to make millions of people happy. Yeah, It's what I do. I feel like after this situation, I realized music is what I was born to do. So my thing is let people grieve the way they want to grieve. A lie? Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, I mean, I don't even know, like... I know what it feels like to lose a child, obviously, like miscarriages and stuff. Mm -hmm. But to actually lose a child that has lived and you know the child, you know their personality, you have plans for their future. Yeah. I can't even imagine what he's gone through. I can't even imagine. It's, it's, uh, It's a lot. But the reality is he has to move on Yeah. Somehow. Because how can he be depressed forever? And you also got to also think as well, he's like, his child would love him to still do all the things that make him happy as a, as a father, as a man, etc. Of course. So I, I can imagine people be like, like, how can you come back out with an album? So what do you want him to do? What do you want me to do? Sit down and what? Sit down and, 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 cry. and, and cry for the rest of my life. It's At some point, come back and do what you love. So I commend him for doing that. I mean, how is it a year? Probably not. It's, Even been, it's it, been a year. It's been it's been coming up to a year. Yeah. Okay, so that's a good amount of time to mourn, you know. Yeah. And you know what? He probably will be mourning forever, and forever. we will never know that. Yeah, we'll never know. So I commend him. I'll be honest with you. I'm not exactly the biggest Davido fan like okay. that. Not like his music's amazing. Like it's it's, it's all about church, like wedding type of music. That's yeah. what he kind of does. But um. He's yeah. fabulous. He's fabulous. He's great. So yeah, guys, do check Talented. Out, do check out the um do check out the album. And we're moving on to our next hot new release, which is a movie, and it is called Air. Mm-hmm. So it is the 2003 American American biological sports drama film, and it was directed by Ben Affleck. Mm-hmm. And basically, it's about Nike and the relationship between Nike and Michael Jordan, and that's coming out on the 7th of April. Please, guys check this movie out it is so inspiring it's so motivational Mm -hmm. um i went to the premiere with victor last week 
and I came out feeling like I wanted to go for a jog. Like, <laughs> just seriously, I think <laughs> the determination of the team, because obviously you find in the movie that Michael Jordan never even wanted to sign with Nike. He, hey, he said, don't even call me. I don't like y'all. I don't want to sign with you. Like, it was, it was literally the struggle of Nike signing... Michael Jordan in comparison to the bigger brands at the time, which was Adidas, big up Adidas, mm-hmm. ambassadorship and that, like, <laughs> yeah, Adidas and Converse. So it was, it, it, it really shows determination, zeal, mm-hmm. the the strive mm-hmm. of, of the employees, but as well as the mother who is played by my good mommy, Viola. Oh, Viola. That's Auntie Viola. Mama. Auntie Bye Bye. That's <laughs> the mother. That's the mommy. I love her. So yeah, please check that out. And guys, another hot topic this week. We have got another show. And this show is called Rise and Fall, which is a Channel 4 show. Oh, yeah. Please, guys, <sighs> highly recommend you check that out. So Greg's James is the host and it is... Uh, normal people who come in and they compete for 100k and you basically have the rulers and the grafters and they basically are working together to basically raise this prize fund obviously a friend of the show moses london is also here as well as another friend of the show which is rachel badder she's the girl we have so, we have so many fucking people on the show rachel. friends of the show they are here honestly highly highly recommend you guys yeah. watch this show are you are you a tv girl are you I'm a movie not a girl? tv girl i need to try and get into it but you know what? i'm watching on netflix at the moment love I'm is blind sex life <laughs> <laughs> don't say that loud. <laughs> what is it about sex, sex life sex life what is it about it's about this woman who basically she's fantasizes about her her ex-lover okay she was mad they were madly in love with each other I would okay. say she met him when she was younger yep and um, she's now married with kids with this like top top notch guy type of thing and she just keeps on like reminiscing about her, her ex mm-hmm. she writes a diary about it and stuff and he actually bucks up on her and they link up and the ex okay and I mean, this is season two now. I don't want to spoil it for people who want to see it. Guys, But no. basically, it, it's all getting messy, man. Woo! But the, it's very, very... It's relatable. Do we... Okay, <laughs> let's talk about it! Have you it's ever relatable. been in a, in a relationship or marriage where you have fantasized about another person that you've been intimate with or compared the two sexual experiences i'll be honest with you naturally you would i'm mm-hmm. not i'm not even going to act like mm-hmm. i'm all angel out here like mm-hmm. naturally you would because i it, you're not my first mm-hmm. i've had previous experiences mm-hmm. from years before I, I ever met you so of course you're gonna think oh but this is different here yeah. and, and whatever the case may be so naturally i'm telling you i don't it's give a, a shit thing. at how much you think you're holier than thou now and how much you're this and that naturally if you've ever had that previous you mm-hmm. would naturally think about your previous and you will make some type of comparisons can I and ask, that goes can for I both a question because this this is another conversation mm-hmm. um when you were um with your um ex-husband mm-hmm. did you um commit to celibacy before you got married i did this is let's talk about this Ooh, baby let's let talk me about pour. this pour the drink pour the drink pour the drink because I am so for celibacy. Mm-hmm. I actually want to practice it in my next relationship. Okay. Because I would love to have a deeper understanding and a deeper love for my partner. But nothing would kill me more than when it gets to the wedding day and you discover that he can't put it down. Um. Or you discover that his penis is... is his penis is kind of small. Like... That kind of stuff will throw me off. So is it a thing where, like, obviously, from your experience, did you have the conversation prior? Like, like, because I, I, I personally feel like even though you're not having sex, it's in, kind of important, especially if you're leading towards marriage, to have those conversations, like, like the bedroom conversation, because it's important. Oh, Big we sister. had conversations. We had to. Um... Big sister. Wow. No, I'm going to say this. I think it's good to talk. Yeah. It's very important because communication is key mm-hmm. in relationships, marriages, etc. So if you want to practice the whole celibacy, celibacy thing, I don't feel that it's, it's, it's a bad thing to to have a conversation about yeah. 
what each other enjoys, perhaps, yes. or previous partners. Agreed. In fact, I actually want to know about your previous partner, not in that way, like in a really creepy way or like a... But I would like to understand, like, mm-hmm. what... Not, even if it's not sexually, mm-hmm. but what was your dynamic like? Yeah. Do you understand? I want to understand those things, you know? It's really it's really mm. important because I've I've heard this story time and time again, especially, and I love my church girlies. Obviously, I, I'm, a, I'm a church girlie at heart. Me too. And, and I'm talking, you know, to my friends mm-hmm. and, you know, that are married. And now it's kind of like, well, damn. I didn't know. <laughs> like, I love my husband, but then, so of course, when you have fornicative feel that you were dated two years ago that was spinning you like a kebab. Hey, Charlie. And now, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And now your husband, the man of God, you love him, but he's not flipping you like a pancake. Oh, like, what the, like, <laughs> God, like, what? I I get what you mean, babes. And um, so basically, that this this is like the sex life thing. Yeah, exactly. But it's true because she's like, he's not doing the stuff that I got with my ex, who I actually loved, and he they loved each other. Not doing that fornicating feel. He's just not. He's not. But you're right. When I when I was uh, I was at church and they were talking about relationships and stuff. And I feel like it's important prior, especially if you're leading towards that, to still have the conversation. If you know you guys are going to get married and you're talking about that, mm-hmm. those conversations need to be had. What you like? Excuse me, sir. Do you eat pussy? Because by the I'm so it has to be. It has to no, have no. the conversation. Because when, uh, you, when you now get married and he says, "Sorry, I don't eat," but what are you gonna do? It's a problem. I'll be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I think this is why the conversation is re- really needed, even mm-hmm. if it's something some certain conversations could be had with marriage counselling prior to marriage as well. That's important as well. Um, I think we should have spoken more. I'm just going to leave saying that. I think me and him should have spoken more. I love that. I'm happy. And I feel like it's it's so important for me to know this because I feel like I do, I really do want to be celibate. If you want to do the celibate thing. I want to do the celibate thing. But please, every detail, including that. Yeah. Because if that's something that you like, Mm -hmm. And it's important to you in your sexual relationship. Mm-hmm. Then you need to know if you're gonna get it or not. You need to, and that will be the deal breaker. It. I'm telling you. No, I hundred percent agree, and I'm happy. But yeah, but guys, please check out Sex Life, guys. Sex Honestly, life. I'm gonna check it out. <laughs> Sometimes I avoid I, I avoid certain things because I'm like, girl, my Christian. No, I don't know. No, but I'm like, no, I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna check it out. But we have one more hot new release. We've got a Little Wayne compilation album that is coming out called mm. I Am Music. Mm. So Little Wayne is gonna release a compilation album of his best tracks, including many classics like Emily, Lollipop, She Will, and Mrs. Officer. Are you a Little Wayne fan? Because you're looking at me so blankly, Mr. Star. No, I'm not, I'm afraid. Girl. I think, when did Little Wayne come out? He came out more like when I was in the end of uni. Or no, a bit before that. Probably a bit before that, but what, that's like, your era and, though that's your era of music my era of music felt like high school for me I think uni I was into Afrobeats hardcore hard yeah and house Obetuabinga Obetuabinga <laughs> like them eras when the Azonto was taking over no 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 no. Azonto would have been after I think Afrobeats in the sense where of um, the P- P- no, that's Afrobeats like um, P-square type of um, yes 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 that yes, 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 uh, uh, yeah that, that, that era music, of, of okay. Afrobeats I love yeah. that era I was like, so girl, I mean I was maybe like, Little Wayne was around those times but, but he kind of your, it wasn't your it wasn't my thing I think because Afrobeats felt so new yeah. so that was more excited about that it was underground music it yeah. was underground oh fabulous but mm. yeah Little Wayne is fantastic do check that out guys do you know what's mad there's one conversation that we have here and um, on social media, people were talking about old school slang. So this week, Twitter debated what old school slang term should make a comeback in the UK. And you said a word that I hadn't heard in a long time. You said a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I've not heard that in time. Did I say that? You Wait, said that today. Wheeling back, you were like, oh, you I said did. something, you were like, a lie. And I was like, <laughs> Has people stopped saying a lie? Girl, we nah. don't say a lie anymore. We oh. do not. I might bring it back. A lie? But a there's some, lie? There's no, some, I say that all the time. People <laughs> are like, we should bring back shubs. Like, we're going to that's the shops. Not, no, that's not necessary. Who cares? Well, I don't go to shops like anymore. To the that's shops. why I don't care. People, but I get it. There's one word I used to bank. 
skin. Oh my god. I don't skin. Sk- when I'm in the mood, I say sk- like if you've done something to the extreme and I'm just side eyeing you, I just have to go skin. It has to come out because <laughs> that's my era. You know, I'm in my mid thirties, and that's how we used to talk. Skin, skin can't go. We have to bring all that like, all the way back. What? And it's not just because there were some people. The man them used to be like, oh skin, like oh skin. But I used to be like skin. <laughs> like you, you have to do the skin. It has to be for those that don't know what skin. I can't even. How how would you say skin is like okay? Like okay, all right, then. all right then. Scene. Okay, then. is that a scene? But then it turned to skin. Yeah, it turned to skin. Mm. I can't remember. Like if somebody, was, I can't remember how I used the word skin. But if it was like, oh, uh, you know, like you know, someone is chatting to someone and you don't like the person, you be like skin. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> they, they used to be different. You used, used to be like, oh, skin, like skin. But uh, girl, I can't remember how you use it in a word to be honest, but I used to say it a lot. Another word, old school dating slang, chung. Oh, I never your said that. I always heard that, but I didn't give a shit your about buffing. that, to be honest. Buffing, yes. Yeah, you say buffing. That boy's so buff. Yes, he's buff. He's so buff. <laughs> that boy is so buff. Wow. He's a chung. He's a. I think the people still say peng. Do people still say painting? Probably, probably, I've heard it. Yeah, I think people do still say ping. And then when someone is like, oh, you know, I just chirps this girl, so chirps. Chirps, oh my, no, stop. <laughs> do people still say chirps? Chirps. Because no, they I, don't say it anymore. But they okay. want to bring it back. Yeah. I they want to bring it back. I ain't been chirps in a minute, so. I ain't been chirps in a minute either. I did have people sign into my DMs, though. Do you know what, Chanel, I'm not going to lie. You've been chirps. I don't believe you. What, on road? No, in the DM. In the DMs, you, perhaps, yeah, but I don't go anywhere. Like, but we, th- that's why you don't get chirps on road. You're, <laughs> you're not on it. I'm not out. You don't go. You're <laughs> like, girl, what? <laughs> because if you're talking to me, chirps, I'm talking. I know it's cringe, but the whole like, what are you saying, buff team? What are you saying? That, that's that's the definition of chirps to me. So, but sliding in the DMs is literally that sliding in the DMs. It's a completely different. It's different. Thing. It's a different thing. Yeah, maybe because it's my era, but it is a, a way of chirping. I guess you're such a classy lady. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Such a classy lady. <laughs> if a guy came up to you and was like, "Yo, what are you saying?" Like, I'll, I'll be like, "Excuse me, how old are you? My son is almost 14. <laughs> I swear, I'll, <laughs> I'll be very put off. Please don't talk to me like that. Mm-mm. Listen, Mm-mm. talk to Lady Chanel with class. Please. The Chanel is not her name for no reason. <laughs> Come on, somebody. It's CNT, baby. Right, we are going to go to the word of the week this week. And the word of the week is vulnerability. Obviously, mm. you know, we always trying to give people a takeaway. And we wanted to help some people out who might be struggling a little bit. Mm-hmm. So this word of the week is vulnerability and we go through our own battles and struggles and it's sometimes difficult to open up about our problems. But being vulnerable can be the first steps to healing. Mm-hmm. So tell me your experiences about vulnerability, if you're a vulnerable person mm-hmm. and what are the best ways to show that if you're not? Honestly, I feel that it resonates with me quite a lot because the majority of what I've shared online is me literally being vulnerable and just putting myself out there so that I'm sharing myself as part of my healing. A lot of what I share is just an outlet, you know? Um, and people do do find it relatable or have gone through the same circumstances or can relate to it and, and, and all of that. Um, I think... I'm trying to not put too much out there now, though, mm-hmm. because the internet has changed. It definitely has. The internet's changed. You can't, like, I would say, let me say, even if it's seven years ago, if I put out a vlog or, like, I used to share things about, you know, like, miscarriages, etc. It's it's probably difficult for me to share that now in mm-hmm. this day and age and be people vulnerable nasty, yeah. and stuff because people would just have, even people had opinions back then, so how much now? It's changed. Um, and you know people start to blame you etc and well not even blame but like oh you shouldn't have shared it in the face first place but what do you expect you know this is a platform that I'm I'm just pouring out my heart mm-hmm. and putting myself in a vulnerable, vulnerable position so um, the whole social media thing for me right now I'm, it's just in that like you, I will share but not to that extent okay you know um and if you're going to be vulnerable to start with someone or with someone you just got to be someone that you trust 
100%. Whether that be your therapist or your friend or your mom or whatever the case may be, you've got to trust the source, basically, of where that information is going to because mm-hmm. you don't want anyone using it against you later. 100%. You know? I 100% agree. That I, think, I think that's always the risk for anyone that is being vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Is it something that's going to be used at a later date? This is it. And I feel like sometimes even... And people can be wicked. People can be wicked and bad. Like, I've shared some stuff on the internet and stuff, you know, I, I try to express myself and what I'm going through one because it's it's freeing but two I also try to think of other people that are going through that stuff and maybe my journey will help them but it's not nice when something that you've shared to help people is then being used against you and then you know you're like guys you know I'm, I'm having a bit of a security with my weight and then someone's in the DM like you fucking fat bitch it's like oh, it's like girl please. Ah, like it's like do you, why, do you why see you what I mean? Me like, honestly, the internet is a very nasty, very <sighs> nasty place. Very nasty Where I place. felt like I used to come here and be like, oh, this is this and that is that. I remember when I shared, and this is me going, this is me being vulnerable again now, mm-hmm. but I'm past it because we're good. But when I shared that my, my eldest son was staying with my mum for a time mm-hmm. because I was depressed after I, I lost my twins and stuff, my mum was helping me with him. He's special needs. <sighs> Some people came for me. Oh, you're a bad mother. You're this, you're that. In our culture, it's very, very, very normal for a child to grow up with their grandmother. Yeah. So this is how we saw it. Mm-hmm. Is You know, my niece, you know, grew up with my mum. Like, she raised her, like, mm-hmm. and then my sister went to work, etc. This isn't new in our family or in yeah. our household but I think it's because my son's special need they thought that maybe I was dashing my child away mm-hmm. that wasn't the case I had been going through something and my mom stepped in to support me mm-hmm. and so I needed to to refocus re- I needed so I had been going through so much more than I have shared and her support at the time I was even declining because of pride but I will show that you know you need your mom right now for this situation. And I'm thankful that I did because in the end I was able to buy our dream home Fabulous. and all of that. But again, that was me putting myself in a vulnerable state where I thought, oh, let me just share people will understand. No, the internet was very mean about that. That's the Very, very wicked and called me all types of bad mother and stuff like that. But my son has now got a big old house in the countryside, all for, well, not himself because he's got a little brother to share it with. But that sacrifice, so to speak, has gotten them more things than you can imagine. You can imagine. You know. I would like to say, can we please put an end to to, to this... Mum shaming. Sh- sh- Mum shaming and struggle motherhood. Uh-uh. That it's, it's almost a taboo and it's almost strange for a mother to ask for help or uh, mother, like yes. how could it be how could you guys yes. be attacking someone to be living with their grandmother she didn't fling her child to a random the grandmother like honestly the grandmother who I practically live with anyway like, because you know we was I mean? literally next door to each other if, do, do you get what I'm saying that's ridiculous and until obviously I moved out of London mm-hmm. me and my mum was stone throw this is so the I, he's not out of my life but obviously with with me trying to grow and build myself because a lot happened i i halted everything mm-hmm. for my son which most mothers do would do yeah but i think my parents even my dad although they're not together my mom and dad he was like chanel you've done your best you need support and that's where my family came in he's like we'll help you with emmanuel get whatever get on your feet and i i made sure that i killed it and i bought a five bedroom blood clot yard yes, in the countryside. Tell, yes, excuse me how you mean so five what five five yes. yeah talk your shit talk five. your shit with a big back garden with a garden my you, eldest you can't even spell my, garden my eldest son goes to a private school you can't even spell garden okay my eldest son goes to a private school my youngest is in a public school but it's a very very good it's practically private i'm the so, standard i'm of, so pleased of education you. you get can we stop this whole <sighs> narrative that if a mother asks for help, that she's a bad mom. Uh-uh. Like I've, I've seen it, and I think that's why a lot of mothers are scared to to speak on things mm-hmm. because they don't want to have their motherhood being questioned. Uh. But outside of being motherhood, you're Chanel. Mm-hmm. And Chanel needs to be okay so she can be a good mother. Mm-hmm. If Chanel's not okay, or if you're not okay as an individual, 
you are not going to be able to have the strength and the mm -hmm. mental capacity to deal with your children, mm -hmm. let alone, I'm getting goosebumps, a woman who has a son with special needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've worked with children with mental health. Mm -hmm. And really? let me tell you something, yeah? There, there are some, there are some um, children who have severe mental health that there are homes in which the parents can't look after them. So they actually stay with in these houses mm. where they have 24 hour care. hour care. So the fact that your son is still in your house, mm -hmm. is still in your space, you're looking after him. Mm -hmm. You didn't go and fling him to the government. Mm -mm. Like, trust me, some of the some of the parents will come in for lunch. You're right, Johnny. Yeah, Johnny, they will play with them for two, three hours and they're back and they're back in their houses. They don't have to deal with their children for 24 hours. So I'm so pleased for you and I'm so sorry that you had to experience that. Hmm. Having a child with special needs is 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 very difficult. Mm -hmm. It's so difficult. I'm, mm -hmm. And I'm and the thing is, this is the problem with the internet. They see one thing and they will base it on their own experiences. My mom would never dump me. My mom would never. But your girl, you are you're fine. One maybe your maybe you had a, a easier upbringing. Maybe you are easier person to deal with. Maybe there's so many other factors as to what you cannot compare your experience to somebody else because you and also you don't know what you're going through. Your mom could have that mental capacity to be like, okay, cool, you know, you had a smooth sailing, you're with your mom, your mom didn't. Just, girl, please. Like, I have been having such a bane with the internet. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really sick of people. And it, like you said, I'm sure it's a lot different from your, you've been on the internet. You've seen how it's grown. People have only grown to be more nasty, yeah. to be more bitter. They cannot stand, they can't stand you because you are winning five bed house. Like they just want, and they, they're not happy with their lives. So what they do is that they will reflect all their insecurities onto you. They will reflect all their commentary onto you. Even today I had it. Somebody was like, Joyce, I think that your schedule is, is all over the place and you're this and you're that. And I said, thank you for your feedback. Mm. Really appreciate it. Hopefully one day you can use your own feedback to grow a platform as big as mine. <laughs> the shade. <laughs> No, but honestly, you tell them. Because I, I, I've never seen, and I, you, there, there will never be somebody. People just need to respect that judge you. What you do for yeah, you. Period. Just, just leave me alone. Sh say it. Leave me alone. Thank you. I'm, and and We're I good. think I think you're a phenomenal mother. <laughs> Thank I think you. you're a phenomenal human. Not enough mothers hear that. Sometimes they will hear. They will hear when. <laughs> like, I think you are a phenomenal mother. I think you're a phenomenal human and I think you're a phenomenal person and don't let anyone motherfucking tell you otherwise because I will go and fight them and I will, they will call police for me. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, for anyone that is struggling with vulnerability, I feel like sometimes when people look at vulnerability, they think that it's, you have to sh overshare with multiple people. I feel like just having that one person you can trust, mm -hmm. whether that, like you said, be your therapist, be your friend be your mom that you can just really open up to at full capacity that will not shame you or will not make you feel embarrassed or judge, about, you. Or judge you about how you're feeling i think therapy definitely is a good way to start mm -hmm. that oh my god did you hear my belly was that your stomach yeah <laughs> It was like a bus or something. Like that. I was like, Whoa. It's like girl, girl, that not a bus. Down <laughs> not a bus, girl. But yeah, just having someone that you can trust and um, if that's a therapist or anyone. So I'm just going to read what we have here. So the quote of uh, vulnerability is, I found that the more truthful and vulnerable I am, the more empowering it was for me. And I definitely agree with that. I feel like some sometimes, a lot of times, vulnerability is freeing because I one thing I love is when I share and then we have this like mini me too movement where it's like girl I've been in the same thing because I feel like sometimes when you when you internalize things it makes it a lot more grand it makes it a lot more worse than it is when you share it it's like mm -hmm. I've been through that girl you're not you're not the only one we are crazy we are going through it we're all suffering Absolutely. we're all feeling this way and I feel like it's, it makes me feel less of a isolated incident because you know sometimes you go through stuff and you think like god god you hate me it's my job season i'm the only one going through this thing <laughs> you know but do you know what i mean job season. it's my job season god is just staring <laughs> at me with everything just killing me <gasps> Let me you know but honestly that a lot of people are going through the same thing and you feel and, and it reduces the the kind of gratitude mm -hmm. of 
the situation. So how would you encourage people to be more vulnerable with their emotions and experiences? I think honesty is important. I think being honest with yourself and your situation and realistic about your situation is where I think a lot of people could start really. Um, and as we mentioned before, it's getting the right people to talk to about this situation or open up about mm -hmm. the situation. Um, a lot of people lie to themselves, you know. Agreed. <laughs> a lot of people are deceiving themselves and on their reality. And um, I think, uh, as I said, it's, it's about that honesty thing with yourself before you be real with someone else and open up about a situation yeah. to someone else. Because if, if you're gonna lie to yourself, and obviously you're gonna lie to others, you know. A hundred percent. Just be real. Just be real. That in, in a nutshell, just yeah. Because that's agree. the that's the that, that's the first or the main solution to your issues. Actually, is to be honest with how it how it's affecting you. And then for me, I'm all about planning. And what is your strategy? How are you gonna solve your issue? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And 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 perhaps opening up is the first one of the first stages of of of, of solving that issue. But even after that, where's the action taking place? You know, you got to take action. Hundred well. percent. I love that. But yeah, anyone that's going through issues with vulnerability or sharing, um, we're sending love to you, and we hope this helps. Honestly, yeah. my problem is complete opposite. I'm a very much oversharer. I I I talk too yeah. much. A lot of times, I share things, and then I get on the train home and be like, "Fuck, Joyce, why did you tell them about that?" Yeah, like, sometimes you know, I'm like that as well. I do that. Also, so I can't like, lie. Oh, shit. Sometimes I even like do my videos and I'm like, I go back and edit. I'm like, do you know what? I can't share that right now. Yeah, girl, cut, editor, cut, cut that shit out. Take that out, take it's that just, out. It can't be shared I feel yet like the, I feel or like at all. The, mm -hmm. the bigger you get, especially in this game, sadly, the less vulnerable life wants to make you. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I'm really trying to push through that and be as honest and truthful and authentic yeah. as you can be because you just end up another branded robot that just does and says what they think people want to hear and avoiding upsetting people and avoiding mm. you know hurting people's feelings but also really running away from what the truth of the reality is exactly. so it's just it's, a, it's just about finding that balance but big up everybody and guys we are having our live show so make sure you use the hashtag cnt podcast on twitter that that had no correlation we are having our live show. Please use... Okay, so we're having our live show. Get the tickets. Yes. <laughs> uh, the wine is whining. Guys, oh. how are you doing? You know, me and Chanel have our own bottles. This is mine at the moment. And this is Chanel. Barefoot Contessa. We're here. I'm, to be honest, I'm doing a lot better than you. You're... I know. I'm, I'm sure. over I don't. I don't. Because I, I have no, no, such no, no. a small it's not capacity. A pressure. To be honest, yeah, this is no pressure. That's not no, a pressure it is. for you to drink. Chokes. <laughs> no, it's like, like, I feel pressure. Peer pressure. <laughs> no, 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 no pressure at all. At your, at your own limit and on your own level. But guys, make sure, please, if you're enjoying this episode, use the hashtag CNT podcast. What are your opinions about today? We want to know how you're feeling about all the conversations that we've had today. And we want you to be involved. And without further ado, we are going to move on to our very special game. Cocktails and takeaways. We have a game on the show in which we ask our co-host cultural questions. And this is the cultural questionnaire. You guys already know. Miss Chanel, are you smart? Yeah. Fabulous. And I hope this is so. the, <laughs> the game to test that. There were some people in the comments yesterday, last week, and they were like, this really shouldn't be called, are you smart? This should, it's like general questions. It doesn't really test people's smartness. And all I have to say is that is suck your mum. The game is called, are you smart? And we'll leave it at that. Like some people actually have toilet brushes up their asses. I don't know, I don't know why I said that. Like you guys need to chill. It's just a bit of fun. It's just a questionnaire and we really enjoy it here. So I hope you enjoy it too. Mm -hmm. But I hope you get 10 out of 10 because we're not, we, 10 out of 10 is still oh, loaded. The pressure We've been doing this for almost two that. years. We've been doing this for almost two years and we still to this dizzy, dizzy, oh, congrats, dizzy day. babe. Thank you. It's coming to two years in June. The 24th of June. That's wicked, it. wicked, wicked. We are still waiting for, we are still waiting for somebody to get 10 out of 10. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know how I'm gonna, I'm probably off my wig. Ah! But, okay, so here's the name of the game. You have 10 questions. You can only give me one answer. 
You can't tell me Bobby, Susie, Becky, Adam, David, oh, no. Abraham, Jesus. You just have to keep it one. Also, my producer asked me to say this. Contestants are now taking too long to answer. There is now a 10 second time limit oh, for each answer no. given. If you do not answer so within 10 seconds, you get zero. Thank you. Oh my God. I'm not good at things like this, you know, because even if I'm smart and I'm knowledgeable, I feel like on the spot, I go blank. That's my problem. So pray yeah. for guidance. The Holy Spirit is with you. Pray for me. All. But guys, if you know any of the answers at home, make sure you play along as well. <laughs> and if I see you at the live show, but if knows? I get a certain thing wrong, they're going to be like, oh, she's so dumb. <laughs> no, they won't call you dumb. They'll just be like, girl, do better. <laughs> Do you know what? Funny enough, Diana, Diana was here and there was a question that I was very surprised she didn't get. And it was, what is Facebook? Um, what has Facebook rebranded to? Or something like that. She didn't get it. She didn't get it. <laughs> she was like, what? what? Oh my God. Like, first question. Hit, went at the first hurdle. I was like, girl. I just looked at her and said, girl, this is going to be a long ride. But are you ready? I have faith in you. Yeah, let's I'm go, confident. Babes. Let's go. If you I ready? get them wrong... I get it. Guys, there's op also opportunity for you guys at home to play this on the live show. So if you don't buy your ticket, you can't do it. So, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Question number one. Mm. In ancient Egypt, what P was the name given to the person who was the head of state? As Pharaoh. Well as religious leader. Pharaoh. Are you locking in Pharaoh? Yes. Pharaoh. That is correct. Well done, easy peasy. Hmm. Question number two. I bet it gets harder. What is the plural word for cactus? Cactus? Are you looking in cactus? I mean, why would you say cactuses, Edia? Why would you say cactuses? Why would anyone say that? <laughs> why would you say cactuses? It's cactus. Are you locked in, locking yes. in cactus? That is incorrect. Stop. The answer is cacti. Fuck off. Cacti. <laughs> it's cacti. Which part cacti? Cacti is I've the I've never heard of that in my life. I've, actually, I've heard of that word cacti. Oh no. Question number three. Cannon, thimble, top hat, and boots are all pieces you can find in which board game? Cannon, thimble, top hat, and boot are all pieces you can find in which board game? Monopoly. Yes, Monopoly. Monopoly, babes! <laughs> You're looking it in. Because, like, you know there's the boot icon? And you said Canon. I think Canon is Canon Street, right? Yeah. It's one of the peop the, the places in it. We're locking in Monopoly. Monopoly. And there's a thimble as well. That is correct. Well Whoa! done. Easy, easy. Yay! Which two rappers are mentioned by Nicki Minaj in her song only what song is it how do you, could you know how to sing it are you not allowed only what i don't even know that song only Nicki minaj only please sing it i don't know the song is it her old or new you can't say nothing joyce why I don't know the song. So we've got no answer? No answer. Unfortunately, we've got no answer. Oh. The answer is Little Wayne and Drake. That, do you know what pisses me off? How easy that would have been? I should have just said it. Just because. Little Wayne, the lyric was, Because those are her Wayne. boys. I never fucked Drake all my life, man. Fuck's sake. If I did, I'm a Naja nigga. I let it eat my ass like a cupcake. My man full, he just ate. I'll duck nobody but tape. Yeah, that was a setup. For a punchline on duck tape. Listen, I'm a barbs. I'm a barbs. I could have. I, I won't be. Going. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not a barb. I'm a barb. I could have kept going. Mm. Oh. But you didn't get it, unfortunately. I'm sorry. See, if you was a barb, you would have got that. 
Yeah, I would have. Absolutely, because I feel like the barbs are very knowledge than everything, Nikki. Yarst. Like, y- yarst. Yarst. That's my mother. <laughs> That's my mother. Question number five. Mm. Which O is the brain chemical known as the love hormone? Uh, orgasm. Orgasm. Oh. I said orgasm. Is that what you're locking No, in? I'm not locking it. It's not that. Um. Four. Oh, three, no. Two. Uh, one. Uh, oh. Um. So what's the question again? <laughs> Final time. Which O is the brain chemical known as the love hormone? If anyhow it's orgasm, but that's not a hormone, that's a feeling. What are you locking in? I don't have anything. I'm sorry, Madam Joyce. We've got no answer. I'm surprised you don't get this. Oxytocin. Okay. You would have not got it. No. The love hormone, oxytocin. No. Okay, question oh, number six. No. When one is envious, mm. they are said to be what colour? Green. Are you locking in green? Yes. Why are you looking at me like that, baby? Green with envy. That is correct. Easy people <laughs> green with envy. Fab. <laughs> 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 Question number seven. Which country won the 2022 Eurovision? This multiple choice. A, Ukraine. B, Germany. C, Spain. It was Ukraine. 2022, yeah? 2022. It was Ukraine. Are you locking in? Locking that in all the way in because we didn't hear enough of that, did we? We just kept on talking about it. That is correct. Well done, Mm. easy peasy. Ukraine with the song Kalush by Stefiana. Kalush. Big up Kalush every time. Big up Kalush. (laughs) (laughs) Question number eight. Guess the song. Ladies, leave your man at home. The club is full of ballers (laughs) and their pockets full (laughs) grow. (laughs) Love is jumping, jumping. Ladies, leave your man at home. What song are we locking in? Jumping, jumping by Destiny's Child, of course. I'm a Destiny's Child fan, obviously. Beyonce and all of that, like... Beyonce and all of that, they're like, fuck the rest. Beyonce and all of that. Oh, no, no, that's not nice, is it? <laughs> that's what you said. No, but Beyonce's my favourite, and I'll be honest about that. But yes, it's jumping, jumping. Okay. The club is jumping, jumping. That is correct. Well done. That is a very good song. Ladies, do you gotta get it? Yes, do you gotta get it? Put the party in, go stop. So let's make it high, cut. Ladies, leave your van at home. The club is full of ballers and they pack it full grown. What? <laughs> and love your fellas, leave your boy and a friend. Because it's, it's 11.30 and the club, and the club is jumping. What are you doing to the club at 11.30, though, to be fair? I don't know. Because people are reaching there about two, innit? <laughs> listen, if I listen, we get to the club at midnight. Do you know what I mean? Part, another part is if you want to get the you know free drinks before twelve, or <laughs> late, ladies free before midnight. Like, that's what you. That's what you're doing at the club. Anyways, <laughs> question number nine: True or false? Humans lose an average of seventy-five hairs from their head each month. Is it true or false? False. Are you locking in false? Yeah. true that is correct it is false we can actually lose this amount per day day yeah we can lose 75 hairs per day that's sad isn't it and question final question number Mm. 10 how many prime ministers were there in 2022 okay let me see this is interesting boris um, who was after Boris? That woman. What's that woman again that came for like five minutes and then the new guy? Three. Are you looking in three? Three. Yes. Two, 2022, yeah? Yep. Three. That is correct. Well done. Easy peasy. 10 out of 10. Mm-hmm. But you did get 10 out of 10. 
You I didn't get 10 out of 10 and I've got you. about three wrong. You got seven out of 10, which is pretty strong. It's six Actually, or seven. not bad, isn't it? Is it? Six or seven? Six or seven. I think it was about seven. I'm going to say fun. seven. If my editor says six, then sorry. But seven is strong. Seven is str- Usually people get I about tried. four or five. I'm pretty impressed with that. That's really good. Big up you. That's good. I'm impressed. Per. Question of the week. Okay, so guys, we are gonna move on to question of the week. We asked the bad boys and girls on Instagram, question of the week, which is, what is the one thing about adulting that shock you the most? Now guys, if you guys didn't answer on Instagram, please put it in the comments below because I want to know what has shocked you about adulting. Do you wanna go first or should I go first? Absolutely everything that shocks me about everything. Adulting is actually shocking. It's long. Um, you go first though. I will, I will, I'll be interested to hear from you. I feel like mine is definitely the fact that tissue actually costs money. <laughs> like when I lived at home. Not in the world. No, when I lived at home, like tissue would just free. appear. Like, or, you know, you just had toilet tissue. Like, oh shit. Like you would really roll, roll the tissue, roll the tissue. Now, I think when I first moved into my first house, cause I've moved, I've, I've, I've lived by myself for a while. When I first moved to my first house, and there was no tissue roll. It really spun me. It was like, wow, you actually have to pay for tissue. Mm. Tissue and tissue is expensive. Tissue's not cheap. Tissue is not cheap. And it and the thing is, then you now have to think as an adult, like there's different qualities of tissue. There are some tissues that don't have the same density. So it's like some tissues like mm. when you roll it four times, yeah. It's done. Yeah. So you and then there's some tissues where it's like, it feels a bit hard on the bum cheek, so you have to get the soft pillow one. Like, there are so many things about tissue. You have to invest into your tissue, babe. You have to invest into your tissue. That was a lot of things that I never realized growing up. Another thing, a lot of people said the price of milk is something that shocked them in adulting. (laughs) Tax. (sighs) Don't get me started on that, I hate it. The concept of credit and taking out loans. Mm Mm-hmm. So when I was 18, I took out my first ever phone with Tesco Mobile. And it was probably the worst decision I ever made because I don't think I even paid, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't pay it on time. And I and when I was 18, my credit was, I didn't realize that the late, if you're, if you're late to pay, mm. it shows on your credit file. And I never knew the understanding or the concept of credit or credit score or how important it is to me growing up. And I feel like that's definitely something that should be taught in schools. No, exactly. Um, and that's one of the things that shocked me as well, actually, that we're not taught all of these very mm-hmm. important things. It's that we're Maths, about English Pythagoras. and science is important, but mm-hmm. I think the real details of life and just navigating yourself through life. I, I, if anything that should have been taught, two things is the tax system. Agreed. And credit. Agreed, yeah. But I feel like they purposely don't teach us these things so that we can mess up our credit mm-hmm. and then we have to pay all these extra taxes that we're probably not prepared for. It benefits them. That's my conspiracy. No, I agree. It benefits, <laughs> it benefits them. Yeah. Us not knowing. It oh, absolutely. It benefits them not understanding about basic things like but I'm curious. Ices and all that yes. stuff. All that stuff that we should I'm really curious. be learning. I'm curious. Are they taught those things in private school? Yes. They are. They are. They are. Because mm, I, I, know, that's the I know some private school girlies. And anyone that watches this that's been to private school, please comment below and, and say they do. They teach them about politics. Yeah. Like, not politics like the way they taught us in public school, where it was like in 1950, Churchill, Churchill, Churchill. Yeah. All they know is Churchill, Churchill, Churchill. But in terms of the, the, the politics system mm-hmm. and how it works and how the voting system is imperative to our living standards yes and our and our, and our functions as a whole no there was no importance of that they just knew churchill churchill that's all we were talking about churchill churchill and in terms of you know things like um learning about tax the tax system mm. credit none of that we didn't that you don't that, that's not in the curriculum in public schools you know how powerful a lot of people will be if we had those things Agreed. taught to us. Agreed. Because do you know what I was talking to my Because a lot of our about? mess ups in life is because we're not aware. We're not money aware. Yeah. We're not we're not we're not new in terms of like 
economy. It, it was yes. an economist or what did they call themselves? Economic econ, economy finances. Yeah, we are not taught that. And you know what? I was I, I found a random interest in a kind of weird. You know how like different countries have different languages. Like yeah, every country you can imagine has, has a, at least a, one yeah. language that's separate. Yeah, to us unless yeah. they unless the queen mother canalized you. Then sorry, maths and numbers is the only thing on this planet that follows one system. Mm. Like, if you do maths in here, you do math, it's the same number system in France, Dubai, all the way to Nigeria, all the way to isolators. The the rule of one to seven is the same, one to 10, sorry, Mm -hmm. is the same wherever you go in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, I, uh, unless maybe you go to maybe an indigenous country or uh, aboriginals or whatever <laughs> but the numbering system is the same wherever you go which I found very fascinating because numbers do rule the world like do you know yeah. what I mean yeah numbers like someone might not be able to to speak your language someone who's like maybe Chinese might not be able to understand English but if he was to do 10 plus 10 i know that actually no they have a they have they write it differently I they think. write it different of but course because it's their language 10 plus 10 it will equals 20 anybody in the world will tell you that's 20 yeah, yeah. It, it wouldn't change but the word sun might be sun in english and sonar in another language and so some blah, blah in another language and the bum buckler in another language do you know what <sighs> i mean but <gasps> one plus one in any in any part in the world will always equal two. Yes. So numbers really rule the world, and I think it's really important in terms of economy and knowing why that we should have been taught. Why we should have been taught that important things. Such to important do with things. Money. Yeah. So that's that's a very drunken thought. Where it's like, you know, maths is the work the same all over <laughs> the world. But yeah, like that's a, that's one thing that really shocks me, and I and I wish I had more knowledge on. Another thing that somebody said was how expensive cheese is. I had no idea cheese was so much. Do you know, I have that same energy for butter. Like real mm-hmm. butter. Like yeah. lump pack. Lump pack is seven pounds. Let me tell you something about lump pack here. Is I will pay. a lump pack. <laughs> <laughs> lump pack is elite and lump pack is worth it. There's something about that butter that even in this cost of living crisis, I will pay the premium. You're going to pay the six pound. I will pay it. It tastes that good. Lump pack spreadable. Ah. Extra milky, extra extra milky, extra buttery. Something about Le Pack that yeah. you can just tell from the packaging, the silver. Yeah, box. it's so luxurious. Luxury made with love. Le- even Le Pack, it doesn't even sound. It sounds Francais. <laughs> it sounds like floor pack. Like that sounds French. Yeah. It sounds like when you open it, you're going to have a high quality experience. Spe- yes, Le- and and that's the case, especially when you spread that shit over when you a nice it, toast, warm, warm bread, melted, melt, and they have the spreadable version. Oh as my well. goodness! Excuse me. It's a different level of taste. Like, trust me, in this cost of living, I will pay the premium when you, for when, that butter. I work. I I grew up with utterly butterly, utterly butterly, utterly butterly. <laughs> When my mum used to buy, I, I never can't knew, believe it's not I butter. I can't believe it's not butter. Yes, I can. I can believe it's not butter because it doesn't taste like Le Pack. <laughs> it like, it's, it's not the same, babe. <laughs> but when I was growing up, my mum used to buy a lot of lard. Uh, they call it lard, right? Like yeah. when something is not butter, I think it was, I believe it's lard. lard. So like fake a lump, butter, a lump of lard. Lump of lard. And I remember when you used to go to the hotels, even um, Premier Inn, and you used to have those little sachets. And you used to spread it. I remember the first time, and I spread the butter, and I was like, "This tastes different to the utterly butterly in my mummy's house." Yeah. Why? And then I realized that it's because there's a difference between lard and butter. Butter. Yeah. And lard is usually the cheaper alternative version. Um, carcinogenic, by the way. Um, don't eat that shit. And <laughs> lump pack. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, fabulous. Listen, I'll spend the six pounds, sorry. But to be honest, I think Tesco's doing it for four pounds right now. That's a plug. That's a plug. <laughs> and finally, what else? Having to schedule it in phone calls with your friends. Oh my God. Yes. I, if you ask me what's the biggest thing about um adulting is the the whole calendar. Yes. You the should see thing. I have all of these different bloody colour codes for everything, chow. Yellow for f- Yours is fab. Like that looks oh, because it's because I'm travelling. That's why that big yellow thing is. So I ain't got so anything don't talk planned. To me. Don't talk to me. I'm busy. This yeah. is my calendar. 
my oh my God. like my <laughs> calendar is the most the like the can you see that when people are like Joyce, what are you doing? It's like Oh my gosh. She lost it. Lost it's a it lot, isn't cake. it? Like, fam, January. <laughs> I have a lot. I, it, it was it was a lot, but you're right. I actually I actually have to allocate Mondays to check on people I care about. That's good. Because if not, I will not have the time to check mm. on my friends. I, I tr- to also check on even my mum, to be honest. Oh my I'm, Lord, it's re- it's yeah. Re- it's really bad. My, and it's like, I will call her just to have that intimate moment with her to be like, mum, how are you? How's life? Fine. Do you need anything? Mm. Like, I really, really struggle with, because like, I've got ADHD, I can only oh, focus on one okay. thing yeah. at a time. So if I'm constantly working, my focus is the work. My focus is the shoot. And I will forget about everyone and everything and every text and every email and every Instagram that I have mm-hmm. for that day. And then I'll forget about it. And mm. then tomorrow it's just still sitting there. And then five days later, I'll feel really get really bad about it. And then I just won't reply because I feel guilty. Yeah. And that's kind of like my really toxic cycle. Mm. So just making sure, yeah, that's definitely one thing. Cost of living, living by yourself. I feel like there's, there's a, there's a, there's this hype about solo living, living mm. on your own. And I feel like... Oh my God, it's hard, you know. It's hard. It's hard living on your own, that's facts. It's really hard. I know I've got children, mm-hmm. but I still consider myself as living... because yeah, you're financially... I'm the only adult. Yeah, you're the only adult. And it's not easy. But that's then again, I was already doing electric. everything, so... Yeah. <laughs> We're going to end there with that shade. We gonna end there I was with that shade. doing it all anyway, so it doesn't yeah. feel like much. It doesn't. It's difference. not really any difference. Do you know what I mean? But you know, per. But guys, <laughs> I want to close there. But guys, if you guys have any input on what you find difficult adult in, please comment below. And I am going to end the show there. Honestly, yeah, this is actually crazy that this is been about an hour 45. It's going to be about an hour and a half, which is literally a lot less than we would ever do. But it's been such a fantastic conversation. It has, baby. I think because maybe because we don't have, we didn't put win or bin in, which is a whole nother uh, section. Mm. But you are absolutely phenomenal. Thank you, honey. Thank you for so sharing you. your journey. Thank you for being here. Where do we find you on the internet? Chanel Boating on everything. So Chanel Boating, open it, pumping it, open it, pumping it. You're gonna see her in Ghana. She's gonna be in Ghana, in Ghana. Oh, I saw you with Joanna the other day. She's hilarious. She, do you know what? Big up on my guardian, babe. She words that I love her. I love you. Like you guys are always energy. <laughs> There's always like this chill but hype vibe about guardian babes that I absolutely love. Like mm. us Nigerian girls were just very loud and. But like you guys are like, I'm chill, but I still have a sick personality and it's <laughs> always been fab, fab, fab sitting with you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Guys, I hope you had fun and we are going to be back next week with another bad boy and a bad girl and we're going to have a motherfucking good time. I'm very excited about next week's episode. But guys, before you ask me, make sure you watch this one. Okay? Love you guys. Ciao. Bye.